Welcome to Pediatric Weights and Measurements. This video is designed to teach you a couple of things. One, how to obtain weights, lengths, and heights on children throughout the life cycle from baby to young adult. And number two, how to interpret that data, how to make sense of the weights and measurements, why we do weights and measurements, and why it ends up meaning to medical decision making. So we're going to start with weight first, and I'm going to start with babies, which are a special group to begin with. So I have before me a baby and a scale. So pretty much I'm ready. All right, so, so some things to note, all right? A, you want the scale to be covered and with something, and then zero to weight, much like chemistry lab, okay? Um, to make sure that the baby is comfortable because they're sensitive to cold things, to overly warm things. So most scales using pediatrics have pads. Um, and in this case, we just use a sheet. All right. The other thing is you want the baby undressed because winter clothing in Connecticut consists of three levels of sweaters, nine parkas and a hoodie. And all of those have mass and weight and will throw off your weight measurements. The other thing is you want a diaper. A, because you don't want to get pee peed on or pooed on. B, you don't want pee and poo on your scale. C, pee and poo has mass and thus weight and will throw off your readings. Okay? So, once you've got those little things kind of in mind, you can proceed with the weighing. So, this shouldn't be too mysterious. Try to guesstimate how much the child weighs and move the little ribbon until you hit equilibrium. And at this case, that's seven pounds and five ounces. So congratulations, you've weighed your first baby. So now on to lengths and heights. All right, length and height are different, all right? Length is measured when the child lying down, supine, Height is measured when the child can stand up. The reason is gravity is no joke. 9.8 meters per second squared is no joke and actually has an effect on your height. So for those of you who are short and are sad about it, don't feel bad. You're actually just a little bit taller lying down than you are standing up. To account for those changes, we make those distinctions. And I'll talk more about that when we talk about growth charts and plotting. But for now, let's move on to tips and tricks on how to get a length on a baby who doesn't want their length taken. So, in other words, the squirming child who's moving around poses a couple of problems for you. A, how to control the squirming child and get an accurate measurement. B, how and from which point to measure. All right, so the real solution is take the baby out of the equation somewhat. All right, so take your tape measure and put it away. Stretch the baby out until you get the heel to line up pretty much perpendicular and then mark that off and then stretch the baby out and then mark their head and then have a caregiver or a parent or a nurse take the baby away and then you just measure the proxy points so there you go about 22 inches perfect and there's your length and now welcome to the section on growth charts. So now we're going to talk about taking data points, weights and lengths and head circumferences, and plotting them across these things called growth charts. So um, a little historical note about where these came from. These were actually developed by measuring and weighing children over the long haul. So what you ended up doing was taking a group of kids at birth and weighing them and then seeing them again at two weeks and weighing them and then seeing them at one month and weighing them and then seeing them again in, in three months and weighing them and pretty much developing beautiful bell-shaped curves at every age group. So what you see over here um, uh, in this growth chart is really just a bell-shaped curve over time. In this case, it's from birth to 36 months. Now, um, the original growth charts were developed with patients and a population that was really diverse. Um, they were from Massachusetts and Iowa. Um, so let's just say they weren't really that diverse. 
So the CDC revised them to be more representative of America's growing diversity in 2001. And those are the growth charts that we use. And there are um, growth charts for um, 0 to 36 months as well as um, um, 2 years to 20 years. Also measured in growth charts is um, head circumference as well as weight for length, which is um, used to kind of determine how kids are growing in, in size as well as length over the first two years um, of their lives. So let's talk about how to actually plot kids. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get oriented with the growth chart. As you can tell, along the bottom is time, birth, three, six, nine months, and over um, on the sides, or the horizontal, are weights. And they're both listed in both pounds and kilograms. We use pounds um, here in the States. So let's plot some imaginary points. So let's say a kiddo is born at 8 pounds, uh, 2 ounces. That's one point over here, a little too big, but you get the idea. Um, uh, and then you see them again at two months, and they're 10 pounds. So you plot them over here. At four months, which is the next usual scheduled visit, they are about 13 pounds, which would put them right about here. And then at the next visit, they're 17 pounds. Well, wait a minute. I can't find 17 over here. I got to look all the way over on this side to find my 17-pound line and then backtrack it all the way over here to kind of get an accurate point. So what you can't see here is a straight edge because it's hard to kind of extrapolate and not lose your way um, uh, from the right side of the page to the left side of the page. Let's talk about common mistakes and common errors that kind of happen. So the first rule is whenever there's a child who is um, losing weight or has an abnormal growth chart, um, the first thing to do is we look at user error. We probably just plotted the points wrong. The second thing that we kind of overdo is maybe sometimes we mess up the um, um, age or scale that we're using and we're looking at the wrong numbers. Sometimes we kind of mistake our kilograms for pounds and start plotting people completely inappropriately. Um, the other hassle is remember that this l weight is divided and shares a side with length. So really the dividing line is between these two sections over here. And you have to kind of use weight in this section of the growth chart and length is really in this section of the growth chart. So be mindful because it is tricky because there's a lot of data slapped onto one particular piece of paper. Another common mistake is overinterpreting one particular point. For example, let's say you're seeing this brand new six month old child who is new to your click practice. Doctor sends you in and you dutifully plot the weight and you get that right there. Six months and they only weigh 13 pounds, one ounce. Well, what does that mean? Should you panic? Are they underweight? Are they failing to thrive as the medical doctors will diagnose? Is this something of concern? Well, don't overinterpret this one point. For example, I could easily say that this child was born prematurely and had feeding issues and the parents are really happy that he is almost approaching the thinnest line of normal or the fifth percentile. Or this child could have been overweight and have developed some very bad disease and is now plummeting down to this point. So this point over here, yonder, doesn't mean anything. Remember, it takes two points to define a line and it takes more than just one point to actually make a diagnosis or at least start getting you to ask the right questions to figure out what's going on. So when do we use growth charts? Well, we use growth charts and we 
plot data upon the growth charts at every single well child or health maintenance visit. So every time the child's coming in for their checkup, so to speak, they're going to get weight, height, and head circumference measurements up to age three for head circumference. Um, we also weigh children every time they come in for a sick visit or they're coming down with something because all of our medications in pediatrics are really based on weight. So how much you weigh counts. So if it's 80 milligrams per kilogram, we really know, need to know how many kilograms you actually weigh. So you end up using this data and generating this data quite a bit. Now, for all of the things that growth charts can tell you, for all the things that growth charts can do, one big reason, you know, question in your mind is, so, I mean, like, why do we do it? Well, almost every disease known to man is going to affect weight or height. Think about it. Cancers make you lose weight. Um, diabetes can either make you lose weight or gain weight. Obesity, of course, can make you gain weight. Um, HIV or serious infections can make you lose weight. Malnutrition can make you lose weight. Pretty much almost every disease you can think of, except for dandruff, can affect your height and weight and growth parameters, especially in children where that is primarily the biggest job that they have to do metabolically. So keeping track of these things is of vital importance and helps us as physicians start to ask the right questions to make the right diagnoses. Now, for all of the great things that growth charts can do, they do have some limitations. As I said before, they are based on the U.S. population. Now, they don't do a certain things. If you have a specific genetic syndrome, for example, Down syndrome or Turner syndrome, you get your own growth chart special and specialized and unique genetic diseases, those kids, as a rule, grow differently and cannot be measured against the standard of normal developing U.S. children. The other limitations is, like I said, U.S. children. So if you are doing a summer internship with a, um, uh, a special tribe of pygmies, you can't all call them short because on their U.S. growth chart, they're all below the fifth percentile. So genetic and racial differences actually do exist when we're trying to kind of make sense of this normalized chart that we use as a screening tool, as a tracking tool. Thank you for your time.